Gregory VII, born 1020, Pope from 1073 to 1085 AD, and Henry IV, born 1050, Emperor from 1056 to 1105 AD. As the Roman Empire collapsed and the old Roman provinces increasingly had to fend for themselves, local rulers and magistrates made decisions more and more independently. Gradually, the local authorities and the families who owned the largest amounts of land merged into a single class of rulers with titles like Duke, Baron, Earl, and Knight. By 1000 AD, these local authorities had also gotten in the habit of making decisions for the church as well. Parish priests were chosen by the lord of the manor, bishops and archbishops were appointed by the great lords or by the king. About 1030, a young monk named Hilbrand pondered these and many other things which he thought were wrong with the church and began to speak out against them. He insisted that the monks and priests should live their lives according to the moral standards taught in the Bible. He also insisted that priests and bishops should be selected by those within the church, not by nobles and kings who were outside the church. For many years, Hilburn wrote and preached about the reforms which he felt needed to take place. In 1073, he was elected pope. He chose Gregory as his papal name because he greatly admired the young Roman monk from the 6th century who had helped found so many monasteries. In a short time, he challenged the right of the emperor to appoint bishops of his own choosing in the cities of Germany and Italy. But the emperor, Henry IV, ignored Pope Gregory and continued to appoint more bishops. He finally convened a council of his German advisors, which sent an insulting letter to the monk, Hildebrand. The Symbols of the Pope Hildebrand next did a very bold thing. He announced that as Pope, he was not only excommunicating Henry from the church, but he was also deposing him as emperor. This was something new. Other popes had excommunicated or banned from the church, kings, and even the emperor before, but none had ever announced that he was removing a king or an emperor from office. Now the emperor began to experience difficulties. There were many nobles who were sympathetic to Hilbrand's reform movement. There were many others who were the emperor's enemies and welcomed the chance to rebel. The nobles announced that they would hold a meeting to consider whether Henry should continue to be emperor or whether they should elect someone new. Pope Gregory left Rome for Germany to preside over the nobles' meeting, and Henry at last realized the seriousness of his situation. Taking only his wife and son and a few followers with him, he hurried south to meet Pope Gregory before he got across the Alps to Germany. He found the pope at a castle called Canossa. Gregory wrote a letter describing what happened next. There at Canossa, on three successive days, standing before the castle gate, laying aside all royal insignia, barefooted and in coarse attire, he ceased not with many tears to beseech the apostolic help and comfort, until all who were present or who heard the story were so moved by pity and compassion that they pleaded his cause with prayers and tears. Gregory called off his trip to Germany and announced that he had restored Henry to both the church and his imperial office. Four years later, Henry returned to Italy at the head of an army. He marched to Rome, and after a brief siege, he conquered it. He appointed a man of his own choosing as pope and had himself crowned emperor, reenacting the coronation of Charlemagne. Gregory took refuge in the castle of St. Angelo and eventually fled to the monastery of Benedict at Monte Cassino, where he died in 1085. His last words were, I have loved justice and hated iniquity, therefore I die in exile. Top, King Henry IV, bottom, Pope Gregory VII.